the great thing is now we've we've learned to sing the solo and now that we've learned to sing the solo we can begin to translate it to our instrument now one of the really beautiful parts about this part of the process is that what we're doing is we're essentially putting what is in our ears into our hands and that's such a crucial part of um, the improvisation process the other beautiful thing about this part of the process here is that right now what we're doing is we're utilizing um, the masters of this music are in our ears and we're going to try to translate that to our instrument eventually this is going to be your ideas that are in your ear that you're translating to the to the instrument but it starts with the masters and um, we do our best to put it there now I mentioned in the last segment too, we were talking a little bit about um, whether or not to slow things down. Um, this is a time where maybe doing that is a, is a good idea if the materials are really fast. There's a huge debate about slowing things down versus not slowing things down. Um, I think that there are merits to both, but by all means, I think the most important thing is that you get this. Uh, because if you get this rolling, each time you do one, each time you do a new transcription, it's going to become easier and easier. So the other nice thing about having learned this solo is that, uh, at least in, this, in the singing aspect of this, is that now um, I've got it in my ear and I can sing it and I can try to play it um, on my instrument. So what I like to do in this part of the process is to simply just do exactly that. Where I'm going to go. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba. Okay, so I got my starting pitch. Um, that may take longer, by the way. Um, I did that quickly. I know this solo already. Um, but it's it's a it's a um, you know you may have to go ba 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 okay cool I'm there and then simply start going ba 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 da ba da ba ba da ba da ba ba da ba da ba da 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 Ba ba da ba da ba da ba da. You can do it without singing it out loud too, but I like to sing it out loud. I think it's a great, uh, great exercise. Ba ba da ba da ba da ba da. Ba ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba. Ba ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba. Okay, so now I've got the first phrase. I'm 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 beginning to roll along. It's slow. It's not up to tempo. I don't have every single articulation along with him. But I'm, I'm beginning to build the process, and I think that that's, um, um, that, that's where the magic of this part of the process really comes into play. Um, and you just kind of can you keep adding on phrases. Etc. Etc. So once you've got the solo and you've, you've you've learned it in this kind of methodical way, what you want to begin to do is play it along with the recording. And this is something that I believe you can do many, many, many times. Um, I could demonstrate this for you. There's a lot of great examples on the Internet of this. Um, but basically just the idea is getting inside as much as possible and just playing along with them. Um, in, in as much a way as you can and getting inside the nuances. So let's talk a little bit about writing this out um, if, you, if you wanted to write it out. Um, like I mentioned in one of the introductions to this, I, I, I have become, uh, became a composer as well. And just the, the, the thought of having to like put a lot of this stuff down on paper was really helpful. It also helped out my reading. 
Um, you know, because you're, you're literally, you're just sitting there counting out one, two, three, four, ba, ba, da, ba, da. Okay. Those are all eighth notes. Starts on the downbeat. One, two, three, four, ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba, 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 da, ba, 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 da. Those are all eighth notes. And so you're just beginning to kind of sound out the stuff. You can consult your instrument, um, and begin to, uh, write it out. Now, a lot of people like to include a lot of um, fussiness about articulations and things like that. That's something that you, you're going to have to kind of discover for yourself what's most useful for you. I personally find that um, I, as long as I have it on my instrument, I'm good on that front and I don't need to do a lot of detail with the, with the, um, with the nuance. I, I do include things like scoops and so forth. Another big debate of, uh, once you're done with this is, you know, do, do you analyze it? And um, I have a lot of great friends who, who have this statement, which I, I actually really love, which is analysis leads to paralysis. Um, I will say, though, that um, I, I'm a particularly visual learner, and it really helps me sometimes to just see what this, the material looks like on paper. Um, and I can go, oh, wow, yeah, this is just an arpeggio of the G major chord. Or in the case of this solo, by the way, this is a, a opening of using a perfect uh, a G major bebop scale. Um, and so um, it's a, you definitely things you can recognize by ear and there are things that you can recognize in your instrument. But if you can take it and write it out, it definitely moves it to the next level as well. Okay. So now you've learned the solo um, and you can play it on your instrument and you've played along as many times as possible. Um, just really trying to get inside the character of the player, um, all of the nuances, all of the turns and the, the twists of the music. Um, the last part of this process is, is a part that a lot of uh, great um, uh, students of this music often skip past simply because it is in a lot of ways it's 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 one of the most difficult ones it's also one of the ones that is sort of the most uh, difficult to kind of um, uh, figure out exactly what to do now here's the really fun part about this part of the process literally the only limits to the transformations part of this process is your own imagination. And I say that with not, um, not so much of a, a, a judgment, but, but as a challenge to you, because there's so many things that you can get out of this part of the process. And the other thing that is really fun about this is it's like you begin to kind of take the little pieces of the puzzle and put them together for your, for your own playing. Um, I have included a sheet um, in the handouts for this that um, talks a little bit about some different things that I do with this. Um, for example, one of the things that I do is I'll treat this like an etude and I'll try to play it faster, try to play the solo faster, I'll try to play the solo slower. Um, um, one of the, the really key ideas behind this um, is the, um, um, learning at least segments of this in um, different keys. Now there's a lot of varying theories about why this is important and I'm going to share with you mine. To me it is less about having access to a lick in another key and more about hearing it intervallically and being able to have key independence. I'm going to take also a step back and say that this is where that analysis component can really play a vital role in this part of the process. Because if you've kind of broken this down and you say, well, this is just an arpeggio or this is just an arpeggio with a passing tone, um, you'll, you can begin to transform this idea um, much quicker. I would also encourage you, it is totally fine um, to use logic at this point in the process. And um, I'll see if I can uh, demonstrate that a little bit. So for example, one of the things, if you're a serious student of this music, is you're, you've begun learning your scales. Um, and so I'm going to just play from, for you um, a my G major scale. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, if you're a jazz player in this in this music, you probably have also started learning bebop scales. Um, and in this particular case, this the G major bebop scale, um, which I also like to call voice led scales, by the way, just because that's really a lot of what they're accomplishing is um, we're going to add the half step between the uh, fifth and sixth scale degree. <laughs> Okay, so now let's let's go back to the John Gilmore solo that I've been walking you through. And the very first um, um, idea is starts on starts on my D, and it goes. And it's a perfect example of that scale. So. If I know my scales, I know that this starts on scale degree five, I can move this to F. What now? So now I'm gonna start on C. And if I know my scale in E flat, I know that I can start this on B flat. The next thing you know, I'm beginning to move this in other keys. Another wonderful part of the solo, there's there's a uh, there's a phrase in here where he goes up basically like a like what is our G seven chord, and he he adds in a little passing tone between the uh, the fifth and the seventh, and he goes up the ninth. So that means if I know my arpeggios, I can go to C. I'm going to start on the third. That's going to be the E, and I'm going to add a passing tone between the G and the B flat. If I wanted to do it in F, the third of that is A, the seventh is an E flat, and I'm going to add the, the passing tone between the C and the E flat. Little blunder there at the first, but I've, I've recaptured it. Make sure that I got it. Okay, so this is a great way to begin to get access to some of this other material and hearing it in other keys, intervallically and so forth and so on. This last part of the process is um, something that I'm going to reserve um, for for the most advanced players um, in this um, because it, it is it is probably the trickiest part of this, but it's also again one of the coolest is um, to try to begin to transform the ideas in some way, shape, or form. Um, I've included a, a, on this sheet some different ways that you can do this. Um, I sometimes encourage my students to write these out first and then learn them in other keys. Um, it's also great to try to figure it out on the instrument. It just kind of helps to kind of pull pull a lot of the, uh, both kind of the intellectual side of, of, of learning this and also the ear side together. But some different things that you can kind of do to this is um, um, mess around, you know, with embellishing it in different ways. For example, if I take that first phrase and I maybe I add some turns to it. Um, maybe I try to add some new um, uh, elements to it, like a like a different uh, approach. Now all of a sudden this idea is transforming and again, like I mentioned in the last segment, the only true limitation to this is my own imagination. Um, and the more that you begin to you, you begin to gain um, uh, knowledge wise, the more ways that you have to transform this. Another very simple transformation device that you can begin to do, is just simply um, um, uh, playing with different shape versions of the tune. For example, I demonstrated in that last segment the So maybe all I do is instead of starting on the third and going to the ninth, maybe I start on the ninth and I go down to the third. It's amazing how those two ideas sound so different. And yet, 
they're really from the same basic, they're, they're exactly the same pitches. It's just a different shape. To me, this is like one of the great, um, uh, was one of the great mysteries that I uncovered about impro learning this process of learning improvisation is that um, learning how to manipulate shapes in different ways could lead you to new ideas. Um, it also, a, a teacher of mine um, many years ago used this term with me and I, I didn't really fully understand it, but I think I have a better understanding of it now and I'm, I, I will share it with you. And, it, and, um, and what he would always say was, um, mockery is mastery. And so I think the idea behind that is if you can begin to take the idea and play around with it and as many possibilities, all of a sudden you are, this, this idea is becoming a part of you. It's becoming a part of your, your, your experience. And you're going to also be able to produce that effect in the moment easier by practicing it here. So let me just take that idea for just a minute um, of the, I'm just going to try to do as many different variations of that as possible. I did the, let me add the passing tone earlier. Let me add it later. Let me add the root. Let's do it with a flat nine. Let's do the flat nine reverse. Let's add an embellishment. Let's do the both the natural nine and the flat nine. Let's add an embellishment to that. Now all of a sudden, this idea is be, I'm, is is so much fun to play around with. I'm able to kind of take it, move it to some different places, and. Um, the good news is if this is a part of the process that you're struggling with the most, um, you can you can add a notch to that because th this is um, this 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 is where it really begins to get um, challenging. But I just wanted to make sure that you were aware that just because you've learned the solo doesn't mean that you haven't you, you still have some homework to do. And at the very least, learning little segments in all 12 keys will completely transform um, your playing. Um, and that idea of mockery is mastery. I just, I, I, I absolutely love that. And, um, and it's, it's really fun for me to begin to take an idea and a practice session and an hour later, it's something completely different. Um, uh, it, it's, it's like the game rumor, you know, where you go around and you sort of add a new idea. And by the time it gets to the last person, at the table it doesn't even resemble the the original source so definitely don't skimp on this side of the pro part of the process but i'd like to circle back at this point and just say that it is possible and i am b believing this more and more that that first step that first step of just singing the solo is perhaps the most important thing that you can do So I hope you found this uh, um, walk through the process to be helpful. I think the most important thing is don't get discouraged. Um, like I mentioned, I struggled a lot with this and I really wanted to be able to, um, to do it. And I hope that some of these methods will, um, will um, help you through the process. And I'd also just like to say then too um, that as you begin to do this, it gets easier every time. So the first one might take you two, three, four months. The second one will be that much faster. And I would just encourage you to um, keep on and don't get discouraged. Um, don't pick solos that are going to completely overwhelm you at first. Start simple. Um, I've included some handouts in this uh, video collection, which hopefully can help you out. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you. And um, um, I, I reachable by email. Um, 
uh, which you can find on the University of Michigan website if, if you have some follow-up questions or um, um, other thoughts about this. And it, I'd be happy to answer them. Appreciate your time. Good luck to you and uh, be safe.